Hey, it's me, Jen again, and today we're going to talk to another doctor from the world of RFA. Stick around. I know that you know someone who has thyroid nodules. So if you would, share this video with them and like it and subscribe and hit the bell icon. Do all that stuff right now. Go ahead, I'll wait. If you have thyroid nodules, you've probably struggled with the frustration of knowing that there's no way to really get rid of them other than surgery. And so many patients have wanted to find an alternative. And since fall of 2018, we now in the US have an alternative called thyroid radiofrequency ablation. And today I'm going to be talking to another doctor who is spearheading efforts in this area of medicine to bring this procedure to the public. And she's involved in some clinical trials at the moment and we're gonna be talking with her about all of that. Her name is Dr. Jennifer Kuo from Columbia University in New York, and she has earned the 2020 Super Doctors Award, which is very impressive to me. I know many people would love to find a super doctor. And her bio on the Columbia University website says she's spearheading the interventional endocrinology department there, and that she is one of the leading international experts on ultrasound-guided thyroid radio frequency ablation. I'm so excited to hear more about everything that Dr. Quo's been doing. And so without any more delays, let's talk to Dr. Jennifer Quo. Thanks for your kind introduction, Jen, and thank you for having me on your show. I actually went to medical school here at Columbia before going back to California for my general surgery training. I came back to Columbia for a fellowship in endocrine surgery and stayed on as staff. I've been practicing just endocrine surgery now for about seven years. And with regards to RFA uh, specifically, we started our program here in Columbia in August of 2019. How did you get your start in thyroid RFA? Give us some background on your training experience. Like how did you practice before performing real procedures? RFA came onto my radar in 2015 or so. I was looking for alternative treatments um, for patients with recurrent metastatic thyroid cancer who were no longer good uh, surgical candidates because they had had so many previous operations. I came across studies on ultrasound guided ethanol ablation and radiofrequency ablation, largely out of Asia. Although it really piqued my interest at the time, uh, I did not have access to radiofrequency systems uh, and therefore decided to first try and start with ethanol ablation. Then in 2017, I read an e-publication of a large single institutional study out of Austria on uh, radiofrequency ablation of benign thyroid nodules. I started researching it more, and the more I found out about the procedure, the more the treatment made sense to me, and I knew I wanted to make, uh, be able to offer it to our patients. When I first approached my institution about the idea, they first wanted to know if it could be done using our current radiofrequency systems that we had in the hospital. At the time, I also had uh, a little difficulty getting in contact with the thyroid-specific uh, radiofrequency vendors. So I spent several months uh, trialing the radiofrequency system that we had in the hospital, as well as the various electrodes that came with those systems uh, using phantom models uh, made out of meat. Uh, the system was not ideal for a variety of uh, reasons, but after several months, I developed a protocol that I believed would allow for safe radiofrequency ablation using that system. In the midst of submitting our IRB protocol in April of 2019, I came across uh, and in contact with StarMed and Tayroom um, and their thyroid-specific radiofrequency system. I then arranged for a trip uh, to travel to Seoul, South Korea, uh, where I spent a week with Dr. Bake and his team learning his ablation technique. And then I also had a chance to go to StarMed headquarters and learn more about their radiofrequency system and electrodes and had a chance to practice on phantoms there. Uh, it became very clear that in order to do thyroid ablations correctly and safely, you really did need to use thyroid-specific radiofrequency systems. Um, after returning from Seoul, I quickly pivoted everything that we had prepared uh, to now use the StarMed Taewoon system. We modified our IRB protocol. Uh, I had to re-envision um, how we were going to incorporate RFA into our practice, and then we submitted uh, various protocols to our institution. Um, during that whole time, I continued to practice on phantoms. Uh, 
Um, finally, our thyroid biopsy program, uh, you know, is one of the f busiest and um, highest volume in the tri-state region. So I was already quite facile with ultrasound and fine needle aspiration biopsy, and therefore um, was able to modify and extend my skill set for RFA pretty quickly. Uh, we were finally able to get everything in place and started our first three patients in August of 2019. RFA for soft tissue was first FDA cleared in 2018. When were you first able to offer this procedure for thyroid nodules? Since our program started uh, last year, we've done a total of 38 patients. I believe the largest series in the Northeastern United States. Are you using RFA in any other way than to treat thyroid nodules? I have treated one patient with recurrent papillary thyroid cancer and will likely continue to use it uh, for these very carefully selected patients with recurrent disease who are no longer good uh, candidates for surgery. We also received a, a grant um, from uh, THICA, the Thyroid Cancer S Survivors Association, and the American Thyroid Association uh, to study the efficacy of radiofrequency ablation as a treatment option for papillary microcarcinomas less than 1.5 centimeters in size. What requirements must patients meet for treatment at Columbia? One hard requirement we do have at Columbia for consideration of radiofrequency ablation is a fine needle aspiration biopsy to document whether the nodule or nodules are benign, indeterminate, or malignant. If patients have concomitant hyperthyroidism, uh, I do require a thyroid uptake scan to discern hot from cold thyroid nodules. In accordance with the Korean and European guidelines, Benign nodules are really our most likely candidates uh, for radiofrequency ablation. However, in addition to the clinical study uh, we have for microcarcinomas mentioned previously, we also have another clinical trial for patients with indeterminate nodules that have been molecularly classified as benign. This is also funded by THICA and the ATA. Uh, therefore, you're not automatically excluded from treatment uh, with RFA if you don't have a benign thyroid nodule, but you do have to meet the inclusion criteria for these studies. Every patient is certainly unique and every case is a little bit different. Uh, so I always like to have a consultation visit uh, with any patient who is interested in radiofrequency ablation. Uh, if possible, I like to review the ultrasound images beforehand uh, to see if RFA is even uh, possible and what techniques I would use to approach the mass, whether I'd use just radiofrequency ablation alone, ethanol ablation alone, a combination of the two, or uh, more advanced techniques like hydrodissection maybe required. And then I like to think about what um, limitations would be encountered with the case and this way I can counsel patients appropriately as to what they could expect. Uh, during the consultation visit, I find it important uh, for us to discuss what outcome uh, the patient is hoping for uh, with the procedure and what their expectations are. If those expectations are aligned with what I believe I can offer them uh, with the procedure, then I agree to proceed. Um, some patients are truly better served by surgery, and I let them know that too. Uh, finally, the patient also has to be willing and able to travel to New York for their uh, procedure. Please tell us about the use of general anesthesia versus local, and which one is your preference and why? Since I perform these uh, procedures in our procedure room in the office, I do all of my radiofrequency ablations under local anesthesia only. Uh, this is obviously very different uh, than my usual operations where most patients are completely asleep under general anesthesia. Um, so it certainly poses some novel difficulties. Uh, however, I do get constant feedback um, from the patient during the procedure, uh, which also helps us make adjustments and make the procedure safer for the patient. Do you accept insurance for thyroid RFA coverage? I accept most insurances, but as you know, uh, there is currently no procedural code uh, for RFA of thyroid nodules. Um, performing RFA in the outpatient setting does help to facilitate uh, pre-authorization from insurers, uh, but this does not necessarily guarantee payment on the back end. Um, our policy is that if the insurer ultimately does not pay, uh, we will waive the professional fee, uh, but we do ask that the patient be responsible for the cost of the equipment, which is really the cost of the electrode. Approximately how many patients have you treated with thyroid RFA? We've treated 38 patients to date. 
What do you think is the possible timeline for this procedure to become more mainstream and covered by insurances? It'll still be a few years. Uh, my guess is three to five years at the earliest. Uh, there is a team of us um, from across multiple disciplines who are working collaboratively uh, to get a, an assigned procedural code um, for RFA of thyroid nodules, uh, but this is a really long and tedious process. Uh, the first step is to rigorously document and analyze safety outcomes here in the United States, um, and that's why uh, we have um, a number of clinical trials regarding uh, radiofrequency ablation at this time. Can you tell us about the biggest nodule that you've treated with RFA to date? Yes, I've uh, treated two patients um, now, each with a nodule that was over five and a half centimeters uh, in two different dimensions. Uh, these were really long ablation procedures and probably at least double the time uh, it would have taken me to just operate and take um, these nodules out. Uh, the problem with the larger nodules is that you likely will require multiple ablations uh, to achieve good outcomes. Any patient with nodules greater than four centimeters um, in a single dimension I do counsel about the risk of requiring multiple ablation procedures. Dr. Kuo, do you provide any physician training? I have not formally uh, personally offered any physician training. Um, I have had several physicians come and observe cases for a day, um, and I have proctored others as they got started in their practice. Um, I have also been involved in a number of uh, several hands-on courses, both planning and coordination of those courses that have been sponsored by various organizations um, that were unfortunately all canceled uh, due to the current health crisis. Um, we definitely have plans to have uh, these hands-on tra training courses once uh, the pandemic subsides. Are you currently able to perform RFA procedures in the midst of the current health situation in our country? Yes, we were effectively shut down for about three months, um, but we were able to resume elective office procedures like radiofrequency ablation in July. Um, I've done now eight patients uh, since re-entry. So many patients are completely unaware of this amazing procedure. What is some vital information you would like to educate patients on regarding thyroid RFA? I truly believe that radiofrequency ablation is going to revolutionize uh, the way we treat thyroid diseases, and we will see the impact of this technology very shortly uh, in the next few years here in the United States. That being said, I also believe that it is really important for patients to know that it is likely not going to be a holy grail and that it is going to be a good treatment for some patients, but not all patients. Although it can be used to shrink the size of nodules that are inside the thyroid gland, a shell of those nodules will always remain and will require surveillance and may regrow at some point. If the desire is not to worry about nodules at all, an operation is probably still the better option. Uh, cancer, except for maybe small ones, are still better treated with surgery. Uh, Graves' disease, where there's diffuse involvement of the thyroid gland, cannot and should not uh, be treated with radiofrequency ablation. Additionally, it is still a new procedure here in the United States, and us early adopters are still learning how to do it safely. Just like any other procedure, it is safe when done properly, um, but there is always risks and there can be some serious complications when it is not performed appropriately. Therefore, if you are interested in radiofrequency ablation, do your research. Find a physician who has received specific training for radiofrequency ablation of thyroid nodules who you can trust to perform it cautiously and safely. Additionally, Find a physician who understands thyroid diseases and can really counsel you regarding the long-term implications of RFA and how it may impact your life so that you can make a thoroughly informed decision whether or not it is truly the right treatment for you. If you can find a physician who can do both, that's even better. Dr. Kuo, how can patients learn more about you or contact you for a patient consult? Patients can learn more about our program on our website, columbiasurgery.org, um, under the Interventional uh, Endocrinology Program section, or they can call our office at 212-305-6969 for an appointment. I also made a short video clip explaining RFAs uh, that can be found on YouTube uh, under uh, Radiofrequency Ablation of Thyroid Nodules Explained.
I'll be sure to link to that video down in the description below. Well, Jen, uh, thank you so much again for inviting me to participate in your show today. It's really a great honor and privilege uh, to be here today. I also wanted to thank you uh, for your tremendous effort uh, in educating patients about radiofrequency ablation of thyroid nodules as an option for the care and management of their thyroid disease. Dr. Kuo, thank you so much for meeting with me today. It's been a pleasure getting to know you, and I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the work that you've done to help patients access this amazing thyroid preserving procedure and for just putting importance on the fact that so many patients want to keep their thyroids. So thank you again for that. And be sure to look in the description below if you would like to see Dr. Quo's video. And as always, never forget to educate yourself and always be your own health advocate. Y'all, share this video. I know you know someone who's got thyroid nodules. Do it, do it now.